What's going on guys? Welcome into another video from the Bulls and the Bears. Today is a midweek update video with the wheel strategy. And before it goes away, take a look at the account balance. We're at $27,000. All my positions have been doing excellent these past couple weeks, bringing the account value way up to 27,000. It might look like, ah, there it goes. We're just below 27, but um, basically at 27,000, which is a big deal because that's basically the peak of my account. I was at it, maybe a little bit higher than this maybe like uh, a few months ago for maybe a day or two. And then we came back down. I think it was after Bank of America earnings when it had a nice rally. So that was it. That was the last time I was there and it's been downhill ever since. Now we're back at it. And it's actually presenting me with a bit of a confliction because I still have a very big unrealized loss with CVS. Uh, this average price right here of $79 per share, that's actually not correct because Webull doesn't factor in all the covered calls that I've sold up to this point. So really my average, my adjusted average is more like 77 bucks. And therefore my unrealized loss with CVS is more like 1100 instead of 1500. But nevertheless, I'm still down over a thousand dollars in CVS. I still have an unrealized loss of over a thousand, but at the same time, I'm happy with where my account value is. So I'm kind of contemplating the idea of just cleaning everything out. Dump CVS, take the loss, get rid of Chewy, get rid of Bank of America, all like right now. I could just close it all right now and be left with a clean slate and an account at 27000 which is a pretty good number. So I, I'm pretty tempted to do that. But I'm reminded of my ZIM position that I had several months ago. It was kind of like my CVS now where it was just selling off for months and I had a big unrealized loss. And at that time, I actually did the same thing. I had an unrealized loss with ZIM over a thousand dollars, actually like 1800 bucks or so, but my account value was at 25 K because of all my other trades and selling puts and whatnot. My account was at 25 K even with an unrealized loss of 1800 bucks with ZIM. So at the time I decided let's just dump ZIM. I'm happy with my account value being at 25 K. Why not just get rid of everything and start fresh with the, with the account at a good level. So I did that back then when I was at 25K several months ago, and I ended up regretting it because ZIM did end up coming back over the next couple of months, and I would have recouped $1,800 in unrealized losses that I ended up realizing at that time. So had I just stuck with the position and kept it and, and whatnot, it would have recovered, and I would have gotten a lot more, more money back, and my account value would have ended up being in a much better spot a month or two later than it was uh, after I dumped it. So although I'm happy with my account value, I'm not going to dump everything. I'm not going to close CVS because uh, I don't think I need to. And I already went down that road and it didn't work out. So we're going to we're gonna stick to our guns here and just give it time. And hopefully we can recoup that loss, bring us up over 28,000 and go from there. That'd be great. So that's what's going on here. Got a lot to talk about. But first, as always, we're going to talk about the economy and the S&P 500. See what's going on in the market today and this week. So here we have market watch all the economic data for this week it's only wednesday there hasn't been a ton of data there's really nothing much this week in general uh, monday we had s p us services pmi we also had ism services the ism services um, those came in over 50. so anything over 50 is expansionary the way these are, are the way these are read anything over 50 is expansionary anything under 50 is uh contractionary uh, contraction in the economy or an expansion in the economy or in this case the services uh, part of the economy and it was just about over 50 i mean 50.3 was the actual number versus a 52 estimate so it came in below estimates just about at 50 indicating that services are still growing but by a very very slow margin uh, so it seems like we're kind of i mean this is just a one a monthly data data point but it seems like we're starting to kind of slow down a little bit uh, but we'll see. Market didn't really react too much to either of these. Monday was an update, so maybe it played a little bit of a role. But as we stand now, it doesn't seem to be anything meaningful. So we'll go to the S&P right here. Here's the daily chart. And we're having a bit of a red day. We were down 14 points, 0.3%. It's really nothing big. We're kind of just going sideways after a massive push up over 4,200. 
three days of pretty much going sideways. Uh, we did have a rally today and came pretty close to 4,300. That's a big deal because that's where we stalled out a couple days ago. Let's zoom out here. Trading view is very slow right now. I think I need a new computer. On Monday, we peaked out at about 4,300, which is reasonable. I mean, this has been a very big run. Uh, you can't expect it to just keep going without pulling back a little bit. So we got just about to 4,300, technically 4,299.28. So we were like less than a point away from 4,300, but we didn't get it and we sold off pretty hard. Tuesday was flat. Today we rallied and got up to 4,300 again, except we didn't hit it. We got as high as, let's see here, I don't know, 4,298 it looks like. Nope, 4,299.19. So essentially a double top where we were less than a point away from 4,300 yet again, and we sold off and we're still selling off. Down over 30 points from the high of day today and into the mid 4,200s. Nothing catastrophic in terms of the bullish picture for the S&P. I mean, we're just sitting up at this area, kind of forming a bit of a flag where you have this, this big run up as a pole and then you know, we're starting to flag a little bit right here. So we'll see if this is just a, you know, a little bit of a breather before we push even higher, or if we're just ultimately stalling out in this new supply zone, this resistance area around 4,300, and we start to normalize a little bit down to the low 4,200s. If I zoom out further, um, I did have an ascending triangle here uh, drawn out. I adjusted it a little bit, and you can see... Um, if it's valid, we're actually holding the top bound as support now. So we're not going back into this triangle. We're actually being supported by the prior resistance of the triangle. So it'll be interesting to see if it continues to hold and then we push even higher. That'd be kind of nuts. I mean, we are almost overbought on the RSI. So I think it would be natural just to pull back a little bit. A meaningful pullback, though, would be below 4,200. If we sold off and got below 4,200, that would be pretty significant and uh in telling i guess that maybe we're gonna move a little bit lower than that no, but i think anything above 4200 we're still in the control of the bulls really i think the bulls are still in control as long as we're above 4200 so that's the picture of the s p stalling out at a pretty clear and obvious area i mean no one should be surprised or disappointed s p has been pretty nice really strong couple days and now it's just taking a breather so that's been very good for the market and my positions personally so let's go to my positions and we'll start with cvs look at this thing go is the bottom in now is the bottom officially in it might be we got as low as 66 uh 34 and now we're over 7150 we're over 71 dollars, almost at 72 this is insane this is huge for me it's about time cvs has shown some sign of life is this just a minor pop in an overall larger term downtrend it's still possible but i'm holding out hope that finally this price is starting to normalize because at the end of the day it's still a great company i don't i don't see the, the reason for it to sell off this much 70 dollars was a big resistance area for cvs we were uh, well it was support at one point once we got through it was resistance several days in a row rejecting off it we moved lower and even on this day on the way up we still rejected 70. but eventually we did push through it we held 70 as support right here and now we're even higher so that's excellent i have a new level here by indicated by this white horizontal line that i want to see this break through that's kind of a result of this gap down right here when we gapped down from this candle to this candle and we rejected off that level on this day too so that's going to be a key level we're at it now and um we actually broke through it a little bit if i zoom in even closer to the 15 minute chart you can see what we're doing we broke through it looks like we pulled back held it as support okay it's just a, it's just 15 minute candles anything can happen but right now it's holding a support let's see if this thing can push higher after that break and retest of that level that would be massive for this name still not able to sell calls my break evens way up here you can see it by the blue line uh, but we're only five dollars away now about 550 as opposed to 10 11 dollars so we've cut the distance almost in half which is excellent after a move like this a pullback is in order it would be healthy 
although I would hate to see it because at this point I don't want to see any signs of a pullback because any pullback we have is going to scare me into thinking that it's just going to come right back down. And if it does, my heart's going to be ripped out and replace the heart that's on the CVS logo. But if this thing can continue the rally and pretty much go straight up towards 77, I mean, I'm going to have to have a video celebration, a live stream celebration just for CVS alone. So that will be uh, that would be insane. We'll keep watching this one, but very, very good sign from this company, finally. Now let's get into the other names where I have some calls sold, starting with Bank of America. Hello, this thing is going. It's going. I sold a call last week. I already talked about this. It was a 29 strike. I collected 20 cents for it. My break even on 200 shares is at 28.65. We're well above both. We're well above both. And at this point, giving the it's Wednesday at three, almost 3.30, and therefore this day is almost done. We only have two days left. It's looking likely that I'm just going to get assigned on this covered call and be done with it. It's very possible, which is a little bit of a shame because I'm selling my shares at 29 after I bought them at 30. So I would be taking a loss on the shares and profiting only on the premium collected, which, I mean, it's still a profit, but not the most effective profit. Uh, ideally, you'd like to make money on premium and the shares, but I'm just looking for opportunities to sell calls any chance I get, and that may mean selling a call below my original assignment price as long as it's above my break-even. That's what happened here. Uh, I could have waited to try to sell a call at 30, but I would have needed this massive move in order to do so because premiums are just so junk on this name. I was lucky to get good premium at 29 at the time. But lo and behold, we did actually make that move, and now uh, we're looking good. I mean, I'm not going to be sad to get rid of this position, but um, it is annoying to, I guess, not have the most effective covered call sold. But hey, if I can get rid of this, make a profit, and move on, given how my account's been the last few months, then I will take it, and we will try to clean, clean the slate a bit. Same thing with Chewy. We'll go with a Chewy now. A very ugly day today. Like I said, down almost 5% now, just about 5%. I have my 100 shares with a break even of 34.29. I have a covered call sold at 36. And it looked like this call was going to be assigned no problem because yesterday we got as high as $39. Way up here, 38.99 being technical. 39 bucks. My shares are down here at 34. My call's at 36. I was like, well, this thing is just going to leave me in the dust. And unfortunately, I'm not going to capitalize as much as I could uh, because I'm not selling at 39. I'm selling at 36 with my with my call. But hey, it's still a profit. Well, now things could be changing. We're down 5% today. Massive, massive, massive red candle. And now we're only 41 cents away from my call. We have two days left. This thing could easily fall back down to 35s, 34s, and my call expire worthless. Now that would ultimately suck because I, the last thing I want is to have this massive move, not being able to do anything about it because I'm locked into a covered call and then have the shares just come right back down. That would be an absolute killer and it might end my career altogether just because there's no coming back from that. I'm being dramatic of course, but that's the reality of the situation and with the wheel strategy, when you're getting into positions by selling puts and you're getting out of positions by selling calls, you're at the mercy of your expiration cycle. And in my case, it's a weekly cycle. I sell weekly puts and weekly calls, uh, but I'm at the mercy of that cycle. I can't do anything with my position usually until that Friday. So just once a week on Friday, once a week is when I'm actually able to make the move on the stock. Take this for example, Chewy. I mean, we had a massive move up to $39, but could I do anything about it? No, I couldn't do a single thing about it because I had a covered call at 36. And the only way to get out of that covered call is to close it for a loss. I mean, being way up here at 39, my call was $3 in the money. I sold it for 47 bucks. I would have had to buy it back for over 350. I checked it yesterday. So I would have had to take a $300 loss on the call to get rid of it and free up my upside. I'm not going to do that, obviously, so there's nothing I can do until Friday comes and the call expires worthless, or I get assigned. So it would really suck that I have this massive move, and then by the time Friday comes and the call comes due, the price is like down here, 
not really at the best point to just jump out. So I sell another call and then it dips down and I'm like, wow, it was way up here at 39, but I couldn't do anything about it. I couldn't do anything to capitalize because I am only on a, I'm basically trading on a weekly basis as opposed to capitalizing on these intraday moves. So that's the one thing with the wheel that kind of annoys me is uh, you can't really do anything until the end of every week. That's the only time you can really make a tra get into a trade or get out is once at the end of every week because you're locked into your, your, your puts or your calls. So we'll see what happens. I mean, I guess ideally in a perfect world for this to be the most perfect trade, it would come down below 36. I would have the call expire worthless and then it goes back up and I'm able to sell a better covered call and whatnot. That would be, I guess, the perfect situation. So if that perfect situation is actually playing out, maybe I just need to shut up and, and let it happen. We still have a couple days left, so we'll just have to keep monitoring this, but a 5% down day is, is a tough pill to swallow. But I do think after that earnings report and given how far it's been crushed, I think it should hold up around these prices. I would be really surprised if it went right back down to the lows after such positive uh, a positive report from their earnings. Overall, everything is going very well with my account right now. We are recovering like crazy. CVS is looking on the up and up by a lot. Bank of America is looking phenomenal. That thing is at, uh, what, 29.50. I have the 29 calls sold. It could still expire worthless. I might not get assigned on any of these positions, but they're still behaving very well. Uh, and, and the momentum is in favor to the upside for these names, which is very good for me. Chewy is interesting because we are having a very bad day today. If that continues the rest of the week, then we may have missed our chance to really get a good exit on this thing. So if you want to see what ends up happening with these positions, make sure you subscribe, click the bell, do whatever it takes to make sure you're here on Friday or this weekend when I make my weekly recap video going over exactly what happened. Because all these covered calls that I have on Bank of America, on Chewy, they expire Friday. So it's do or die this week. So when my video comes out, we will have answers. We will see if I'm still in these positions. You can always check these names yourself with my positions in mind. Um, and then we'll report back on, on this weekend. So thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed, hit that like button, subscribe for more content, and I'll see you all next time.